All right, case six, 30-year-old woman with an intramuscular thigh mass, no connection to bone on imaging. And I think I put three slides in here, but I think the first one shows us pretty much what we need to see. Any, anyone want to take this? Okay. All right, so on this, you can actually see kind of like a bimorphic pattern. That's going on. You have like this area of cells that have like these small, more round cells that have like these um, thin wall branching vascular pattern that's kind of paired with these other areas of um, calcification, ossification. And then even within here, you have like, you get up to having these areas of um, islands of like wispy highland cartilage. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. with this combination of like this bimorphic pattern and this thin wall branching, I thought this was extra skeletal mesenchymal chondrosarcoma. Excellent work. Yeah, this is a, a be about as classic as you can ask for a mesenchymal chondrosarcoma. They can occur either in the soft tissue like this case or in the bone. I think a little bit more common in the bone. The jaw is a good site, but other places in the, around the skull, uh, the meninges can sometimes uh, can grow from the meninges. So a lot of times I think of them as head and neck tumors, but they're definitely well described in the ribs and the extremities, both in bone and soft tissue. So really can occur anywhere. Um, but, uh, and they tend to be, you know, teens, the young adults, but they can also occur in a wide age range. The classic features are just like you described. We get islands of kind of mature, well-differentiated cartilage. Although I like your point, I think it kind of has a, it doesn't look like to me like totally normal cartilage, but it's obviously recognizable as cartilage. But I, I like that point. It's kind of a wispy, the matrix becomes wispy and almost osteoid-like. And then in this case, there is actually some, some metaplastic, true metaplastic bone formation, which is why I told you that, you know, this could be confusing um, and you could think this is maybe in the bone, but that's why I mentioned that on imaging, this was not connected to bone. So this is just some metaplastic bone, which can happen in these that's forming, um, I think probably from the cartilage here um, in this tumor. So the, the, the key is finding those islands of cartilage. And then in the background, you've got a round blue cell tumor, right? It's made of monotonous, small round blue cells. And they're monotonous because why? There's a translocation in these tumors. And most sarcomas that have uh, gene fusions or translocations tend to have uniform monotonous cells rather than pleomorphism with a few exceptions. But in general, if you think about it, Ewing sarcoma, synovial sarcoma, and on and on, they all, they may look malignant because of mitoses or necrosis, but they don't have pleomorphism usually because all the cells have the same exact gene abnormality. And that's another uh, pearl taught to me by my mentor, Mark Edgar. So I, I really love that and I find that incredibly useful in practice. And so uh, does anyone know what the gene fusion is described in this entity? Yeah, exactly. Hey, one and co a two, at least I try to make genes pronounceable. I don't know if that's legit with all my colleagues uh, who are molecular pathologists, but I, I have to do it to remember them because otherwise it's like strings of letters and numbers and they just don't stick in my head. So I have to try to make ways to say them. So, Hey, one and co a two, which in this case was positive for, but I mean, really the features are diagnostic here. I think the bigger problem is if you get a small biopsy and you just get the round blue cell area, right? Then you got to think about Ewing's and a variety of other things. The key here is the branching staghorn hemangioperiocytic vascular pattern, if you like that terminology, the branching dilated, really prominent vascular network here in between the tumor cells and they're round blue with that network. Always think of mesenchymal chondrosarcoma, even if you don't see the cartilage areas, and then you can send it for molecular in that case. Uh, a problematic thing with these tumors is that they can have a kind of a, an unusual mixture of immunohistochemical findings. They can be positive for CD99, like the majority of round blue cell tumors will. Dr. Weiss said CD99 is a, mar a marker of small round blueness. If it's a small round blue cell, unless it's like a neuroblastoma, which is classically 99 negative, everything else is going to stay with CD99 oftentimes, okay? So be very wary. I only, I really only find CD99 useful in the workup of round blue cell tumors. If it's positive, then I usually will reflex on, if I'm thinking of Ewing's, I'll go on to do Ewing's molecular. Um, or if it's negative, then I feel pretty comfortable that it's probably not Ewing's, okay? So I kind of, that's really the main use of CD99. It's described in a lot of other entities, solitary fibrous tumor and stuff. I just don't find it helpful there because it's so nonspecific. So it's not as bad as my mentin, which is no place in soft tissue pathology um, in the modern times, in my opinion. Uh, but in any case, so what? But what? Um, what this is 
this is positive for 99. It can also be positive for S100. And it can be positive occasionally for EMA, Desmond, myogenin, myoD1, the markers of rhabdomyosarcoma. So you could really go down the tubes if you had some of that staining and round blue cells and you thought it was an alveolar rhabdo. Now, I've never, I've only seen a few of these and I've never seen one to my knowledge that was Desmond and myogenin, myoD1 staining. I don't know. I would assume it's kind of focal. And in alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma, you usually have diffuse like all the cells stain with myogenin. Um, so that might be a helpful feature, but that's a real big pitfall because if you see a malignant round blue cell thing and you see Desmond and, and myogenin or myoD1, I mean, the first and third and fourth and fifth thing that comes to your mind, I mean, everything you think of is rhabdo. Um, so uh, important to keep that, um, that pitfall in mind to make sure that you know that these can occasionally mimic rhabdo on immunostains. So really characteristic example, mesenchymal chondrosarcoma. Excellent work.